Last time we found two different examples of highest common factors using this funny method where I kept doing this division with remainder business. And you might be wondering, or you should be wondering, I hope you're curious to know why this works. Now this process is called Euclid's algorithm. It's called Euclid's algorithm. An algorithm is a method, it's an organized method for going about doing something that sort of tells you here are the steps that you have to perform. You just keep doing them and then eventually you'll get to the end of the process and an answer will pop out. That's what an algorithm is. So the question now is, why does this algorithm work? So let's have a look at what we did. We started by trying to find the highest common factor of 48 and 21. So I then did it like this and I said, how many times is 21 going to 48? And I found the remainder. And then I did it again for 21 and 6. And then I did it, did the remainder thing again, and then I did the process for 6 and 3. And basically, the whole idea of this is that actually the highest common factor of these two numbers is the highest common factor of those two numbers. It's the same thing. So in order to find the highest common factor of 48 and 21, all I have to do is find the highest common factor of these two. And to do that, all I have to do is find the highest common factor of these two. And you see, as you keep going down, you're making the numbers smaller and smaller that you're investigating, so it becomes easier and easier, and eventually, the number just will go into it. So by the time you've got 6 and 3, this one is actually divisible by 3, so you know that the highest common factor has to be 3, so it stops. So let's try it on this side as well. The point is that we're trying to find the highest common factor of 906 and 210, but actually that's the same as finding the highest common factor of these two things which is the same as finding the highest common factor of these two things, which is the same as finding the highest common factor of those two things, but now that goes into it exactly, so we know that that has to be the highest common factor. So let's try and prove that that really does work. Let's prove that that really does work. So the claim, or maybe this is a little lemma, that if A equals Q times B plus a remainder, so you might be interested in A and B, so you say to yourself, how many times does B go into A? It goes Q times, Q for quotient, and then there's a remainder left over. Then, the highest common factor of A and B is the same as the highest common factor of B and R. So in order to prove this, we have to very carefully remember what the definition of highest common factor is. So I'll just remind you now, in case you've forgotten. So a highest common factor is something that is a factor of both these numbers. And moreover, any other factor divides it. Okay. So let's check that both of these have the same, these pairs of numbers have the same highest common factor. We've had enough space on the board. Well, we'll see, won't we? So let's say that this is n. So suppose the highest common factor of a and b is n. So let's just remind ourselves what that means. So 1, n divides a and n divides b and also um, if you have some other divisor, supposing D divides A and D divides B, then D has to divide our biggest one. Okay, so now we're going to claim that the highest common factor of B and R is also N. So we have to prove these two things for B and R. So first of all, we need to show that N divides B and N divides R. Well, we know that N divides B by that. So we need to show that N divides R. But look, R is
is A minus QB. But R equals A minus QB. And we know that N divides A and N divides B. So N has to divide R. And N divides A and N divides B. So N definitely divides A minus QB. Remember, we had some lemmas before that said if N divides this and this, then N divides the sum. That means you can also divide the difference. So now we have to show that if D divides both B and R, then D divides N. So now suppose D divides B and D divides R. So we're saying, suppose D is another divisor, we have to show that it divides our one, which is the biggest one. Well, if D divides B and R, then we know that D has to divide A. Right. So then, also, D divides A. But now we know that D divides A and D divides B. So by this condition, we know that D has to divide N. So by, I should call these conditions something really. So let's call this condition uh, one with a circle around it and this one two with a circle around it. So by two, D divides N. Because this one says, if D divides A, maybe I should stand up here. If D divides A and D divides B, then D divides N. And we suppose that D divides B and R. That means it must divide A. So now we can apply 2 to show that D divides N. So this part, this part is by 1. So condition 1 caused condition 1 to be true. And condition 2 caused condition 2 to be true. So we have shown that A and B have the same highest common factor as B and R. Let's recap. We had to show that N satisfied these two conditions for B and R, and this is now done. So I'll put a little box at the end to say this is proved. So what that means is that you can simplify your task of finding the highest common factor of A and B by doing this to it and making sure that B and R are smaller than A and B. So then the question is, can you definitely always make that true? Okay, so let me take this proof off. So then the algorithm uses something that's called the division. So that says that you can always do this, you can always divide with a remainder. So it's also, you can think of this as division with a remainder. So intuitively what you do is you, you put B into A as many times as possible, and then the remainder is going to have to be less than B, right? So you can always get, so you force R to be strictly less than B. So that means that when you perform this algorithm repeatedly, the numbers that you're interested in will get definitely smaller and smaller and smaller. So that means that the algorithm will have to get easier because your numbers are getting smaller. There is a rigorous proof that this algorithm really works and terminates, but I think we'll leave that for another time. <laughs>